Well, this is the very sad um, outcome of Storm Katie. Let me take you what remains of my working garden. Um, very sad. The one thing I'm lucky, there's only a couple of panes affected on the greenhouse. It's an absolute, we've made safe and taken everything. It's an absolute disaster area and this doesn't even show the damage to the house which is a corner of ridge tiles um, just rescued everything we can and put safe um, it's sad it's awful um, it's going to take a long time to catch up um, yeah just wanted to share with you because I'm sure many of other of others of you at Euler allotments or in your gardens have had a similar outcome. I feel for you too. Yeah, lots of work to do. Onwards and upwards, I suppose. But the one thing that has stayed safe other than the window that broke off and a pane of glass for some odd reason I think it might have been the window breaking off meant there was an escape route for the air rather than lifting up the greenhouse I think probably losing the window actually saved us here's my greenhouse that 12 foot by 8 foot workshop just crumpled so yeah just thought I'd let you know where we're at. I'm going to do some sewing today. It's the first day for over a week I've got up to the greenhouse because of my chest infection. Um, that's really just to try and make me feel better because I could cry when I look at all this. But anyway, I'm going to do some sewing. As you gardeners know, it's probably the th best therapy we can have. Speak to you soon. Well the insurance assessor is coming today to assess the damage from Storm Katie. As you can see it's terrible. Chicken survived under a collapsed workshop. It's just an utter state of devastation but I have reconfigured the greenhouse so space I've lost in the polytunnel I can use peas I've got a heritage variety Prince Albert and a normal variety the Rob Smith grafted currant tomatoes coleus nothing some leeks in the background some sorrel some petunia, some what's that? Purple, basil, onions for my friends, aubergines, nothing. I don't know how long they take or whether I should try again with a propagator top. One measly tomato out there. Nothing from the dahlias. That leaf parsley coriander, full of beans, oh and one tomato down there, um, cosmos, salad leaves, a lot of cosmos, more petunia, lettuce leaves, so yes more space in my greenhouse until we get the damage repaired. I'll have to stay looking at the greenhouse, not the garden, because it makes me very sad. Okay, see you later. Right, take my mind of the mess that the top working garden is. I'm going to grow some um, dwarf blotty bean and I'm sorry however I say dwarf because my family take the mickey out of me for how I say that 
<coughs> um, what I hope to do is um, dry them on the pods after I've had a few fresh harvests and dry them thoroughly and then hopefully um, we can have beans in our soups and casseroles and things during the winter months that I've grown on the allotment. So I'm going to plant them in quite deep cells and um, I'll let you know how they go. Right, I hope you can see that. I'm planting them on their side to about a knuckle depth. On their side means there's less of a surface area for water to gather and for the seed to rot. Just to about a knuckle depth. I'll give those a thorough water, label them. And that's one more thing done for today. Right, um, my um, pepper an aubergine that I planted a few weeks ago has yet to appear. Um, I don't know whether I'm doing the right thing by re-sowing some, only because I didn't put a um, plastic cover on, so I'm not sure if it was warm enough for them to start. I always rather do, hmm, I say that and then get fed up. I'm going to do some more as an insurance, and if the others do show, then um, um, I can, sorry that's the dog, please bite, come on then, come on then, um, I can give them away. So I'm just going to do a few, I'm going to do a row of aubergine and a row of pepper and put it in with other crops that I'm going to start under the propagator. So here we go. Aubergine, very small seeds. As a general rule, a bit too deep actually. As a general rule, just cover the seeds as deep as they are. So if it's a big seed, you go deeper. If it's a small seed, you go shallower. So there's, I'm only doing four because as I say, knowing my luck, I'll do this. and more will appear um, but I just think it wasn't warm enough without the propagator for them to start oops got one there there we go so I will mark up with my pen until I get some labels because that's I always forget aubergine and I'm going to do some peppers here. Okay. Again, I think they just weren't warm enough to establish. I may be just being impatient. But I'm growing um, sweet Marconi Rosso. So I'll try that. I grow sweet peppers. I'm not a great chilli fan. I grew some chillies last year but in fact didn't use any of them and then forgot to dry the rest. So let me do four peppers. Very similar to the aubergine. Again just doing four. And I'll label these up. properly when necessary. I'll label these up in a moment so I don't forget what they are. I don't know if you can see how tiny these peppermint seeds are. I'm going to try growing some peppermint because I love peppermint tea in fact it's the only peppermint based teas are the only teas I drink so I'm gonna have a go but they're minuscule I'm probably only gonna do one plug of them because I'm gonna get so many seeds out in a tiny pinch you won't be able to I can barely see this so you're not gonna be able to 
and I'm just going to put an absolutely tiny amount of soil on top and just give them contact and I'll water those in. Purple sprouting. The chickens are having a bit of a four hour out the back there. Um, I'm going to try this, never tried it before. Um, this is Brock Lice Purple Sprouting. Um, just because we're going to try and create a brassica cage on the allotment and probably using, as you saw, the devastation in the polytunnel. The polytunnel base um, um, frame, I mean, and we're going to, um, um, I'm just putting three in each one, we go, or four, we're going to use that with some mesh and create a brassica cage um, where we do obviously brassicas but we also do lettuce and salad crop and carrots all things that fly and caterpillar can get I just do one more I've got an extra man um, with any luck we can get a bit of extra protection that way in the polytunnel now as you saw up on our polytunnel it was just the lid that got massacred in the, the lid, the plastic that got massacred in Storm KT, um, because I use electric fence. Um, if anybody knows what electric fence poles are like, they've got a, they're really sturdy, they're flexible to allow for the wind's movement, but also they've got a metal point you can put into the ground. So we're going to do that up the polytunnel to ensure that it stays put as it did in with the KT, but unfortunately. Let me show you once again. Oh, let me turn this round. Here we go. So, so. Absolute devastation. Let's see. But. This is how. Reinforced it. And this is simply one of these electric fencing, which has got a good spike at the bottom, and it meant the frame survived and nothing else did. We can go at the allotment today. <coughs> See how we can combine two allotments to one. My 14 year old has got some very artistic ideas on how to do it. I don't know whether they're going to come off. Um, there's, I'm limited to what I can do still, unfortunately because of my pelvis and I've had a raw and chest infection. Um, but even if we can move fences, if I can do a bit of weeding, um, it's all going to be quite exciting. So we're going to take you up there um, so you can have a look at the allotment. Um, the previous person had done little little beds, whereas we tend to cultivate the whole lot. So have a look at it with us, see what you think. You might have far better ideas than we do. Um, we hope to see you there. Hello, you come up to see us. You come to see us. Bye bye. Right, here's our allotment. Relatively small compared to other people's plots, I know. And as you know, due to ill health, we're very behind. So that's the extent of our allotment. But the exciting thing is, Andrew's moved his allotment to next door. And this is the first time we've been on it. This is next door's allotment. So we're going to make it into one big one. He's left quite a bit for us to clear up, but we can make use of that for a fruit cage. I think these are Taybury and Blackberry. 
and he had lots and lots of little beds so we're going to cultivate it all and probably do lots of big beds instead. We've inherited some hoops which will be great for netting. And what else have we got here? Forget me not to get those up quick before they spread. Aquilegia. I'll take those home and put them in the garden. There's several of those. And look, a rhubarb. Lovely. And something I've always wanted and never grown up the back here. A fig tree. So I'll have to look up for some advice on that. So it's time to weed, plan and get excited about what will be if I go to the top corner our plot which will become this side size Hello. this is Fletcher yeah. so wave Fletcher to the camera okay and Fletcher what are you going to plant Tattoo. sunflower yeah so what have you got to fill the pot up with Come then, you do that. Oops, it. Tell the camera what you're doing. So I'm filling the pot up. That's it, that's enough. Leave a bit of space at the top. Because we need to water it, don't we? So just take a little bit out. That's it. Now, can you press that down? Are you going to do it with that? Use your hands. Right, good boy. And can you hold this up to the camera to show people what you're planting? It's called sunflower. Yeah. Sunflower. Okay, can you open the packet? Rip the top. videos and checking seedlings. A female of the species, resplendent with the long golden hair, socialising with the greyhound before going inside for a cup of tea and a ponyhoe. 